All right, so uh, I'm back. We have successfully connected the uh, Rhino 4125 to the tractor, and this was last night when it was delivered. Uh, I then went out and did about uh, probably two hours worth of cutting, about 45 minutes with light, and then I cut in the dark since I was doing some stuff I was super familiar with. So um, very early impressions are that uh, you know, I'm super excited. It just really kind of gives me the ability to run over almost anything that I, I think is reasonable. Uh, the cut width is uh, kind of a game changer. Uh, in some situations, I can cut both sides of the road at the same time. You know, if the, if the train is right or the road width is right and I'm comfortable with what's on either side of the, uh, of the road. Um, the cut quality is much better than I thought it was going to be. And I'm really surprised. And, you know, obviously it's got brand new blades on it. So things are really sharp. But, you know, the uh, the triple deck uh, configuration allows one side to tilt up. So if there's uneven terrain under one wing, that the rest is still doing what it needs to do, which is helpful on, on country dirt roads because, you know, they're, they kind of go high on the sides, down, up in the middle, down, and then up again. And uh, it kind of floats across those. Even in places where the dirt was high, it was just leveling the dirt, which was kind of nice too. Uh, taking some of the high spots out of the dirt, it would just basically chug right through it. I've got a, a, Massey, a Massey Ferguson 4707, 62 horsepower at the PTO. And uh, only in a situation where I had maybe two or three blades in the dirt did it actually start to sound like it was slowing down. Other than that, it just chugged right through everything that I ran over. Um, getting it connected was a bit of a challenge. You know, it's got the uh, slip collar on there. It's heavy. The shaft is heavy for obvious reasons. And uh, the pin configuration was a little bit, um, you know, the, the pin I had for my tractor uh, didn't fit through the, uh, the hole on the hitch on the Rhino. It was actually too big. So uh, I had to go find another pin, replace that. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, young man that came out here to help me set it up hadn't set one up in a while, and he put the drive shaft on first, or the PTO shaft on first, and then tried to put the pin in. Couldn't get the pin in, so then we had to struggle to get the drive shaft off or the PTO shaft off again and do it. So get it connected to your trailer hitch and then the PTO shaft. As far as the rest of it goes, you know, uh, set up, you know, getting the weights, uh, which are here, not the weights, the, the spacers, that really uh, determine how high or low the deck's gonna go. That was relatively an easy process. Uh, that just, you know, the more you have, the, the less it'll go down towards the ground. Uh, the wings popping up was kind of new and interesting. Um, having seen, you know, experienced that for the first time, it does tend to dump everything on the wings into the middle. So you create more of a mess in the middle, the more you gotta move the wings up and down without cleaning them. Um, the, I'm gonna flip you guys around. Hang on. So these are the spacers that are used. That's a, uh, I believe it's a travel lock. Um, these are travel locks here that lock into place. One thing that the, um, the guy told me was when they're locked up and you go to unlock them to let them down after transport, make sure that you wiggle the PTO to make sure that there's uh, hydraulic pressure on them. If you could somehow get that loose without hydraulic pressure, it would fall to the ground. So that was a good safety tip. Uh, this has got the uh, top of the line tires on it. Obviously they are not going to go flat. Got a little tread on there for traction on hillsides, which I don't do, not a big deal. It's got a jack stand that comes with it. Uh, a little concerned about that handle getting dent and ripped off. Um, the other thing back here, you know, I got the, the lower lift arms and the quick attach. Uh, they tend to get in the way a little bit when you're trying to really turn around or make a hard turn. Got to keep an eye on the hydraulic hoses, make sure that they're not getting caught on those or you don't turn and the mo maybe the mower is up higher than usual. Uh, we potentially run into those. On the back of my tractor, I just got a mess. Uh, I got a lot of things going on here. Really what I need to do is just take this off. You know, right now it's just kind of hung up there, not really doing anything and uh, getting it out of the way. Uh, I've got some other lines that go to the front of the tractor for the front cutter. But uh, this comes in and actually, this is the, uh, I don't know, I don't remember if it's the, the deck height 
or it must be the duck height. But anyway, uh, actual splitter. So hydraulic fluid's coming and going from the same uh, cylinder, which I thought was interesting. I'm not quite sure how that works. Maybe one of you guys know. And then you got two others that plug into those, which control the up and down. So, um, you know, just a, a quick overview from someone that's never owned a Batwing before. Certainly nothing of this size and magnitude. Um, super happy early on. I think it's going to be great. I'm going to go do some stuff uh, today. I got a 25 acre job on a power line that needs to get done. Uh, this should be great for that. And I've got a customer's property that um, I actually subbed out to somebody because I didn't have time. And he wasn't able to cut it all because he didn't have, a, you know, his brush cutter wasn't big enough to cut some of it. So, um, and, and his tractor was too small. So I'm gonna have to go back and, and take care of that stuff. But I'm looking forward to seeing how this kind of just cuts through all that. I did uh, cut over or cut a three inch tree and a four inch tree. The four inch tree I pushed over with the tractor and let it slide under the tractor and then come up underneath the cutter. I have a steel plate under my tractor, which I had custom made and, and attached down below. You can see it there. That steel plate down there on the bottom runs the entire width of the tractor uh, and also the entire length of the tractor. You can see here's the front mounting deck of it. There was just too many small pipes and things like that under the back of this tractor for the type of work that I do not to have some additional pre uh, protection. So now I just push the tree over and then I can just let it run underneath the tractor knowing nothing is going to get hit or damaged. Then it comes out right underneath the brush cutter. The front part of the tree is still under the under the steel plate and then the, uh, you know, the bottom of the tree is getting cut by the time the by the front part comes out. So it cuts it off the base, the tree gets laid down, and then the rest of it runs over. Uh, with the three inch tree, I just hit it with the wing, went slow and, you know, the wing kind of lifts up, but then the tree gives and then uh, I ran over and cut it pretty quickly. So um, very little effort on the, on the cutter's part. Um, so that's the uh, early review. Hope you enjoy it. You know, if you're looking for a heavy cutter, this is certainly one to take a look at. Um, you know, if you're looking for a grass cutter, this is overkill. But, you know, I run over a lot of different stuff. So uh, enjoy. And you know, if you got any comments or feedback, let me know.